I need to be honest with you. How many people here are afraid to be honest with God? Anybody? I mean, really be honest. I mean, really, really be honest. Okay, not a problem being honest with God. How many people here fear being honest with themselves? So I can be more honest with God than I can be with myself. How does that happen? How does that happen? I can be real honest. I'm, I'm broken, damaged goods. I'm an empty, redeemed bottle. I'm a crushed aluminum can on the side of the road that somebody picked up and said, hey, we can use that. Right? I'm a car with three flat tires on it. I have a tendency to be angry. You can ask my family. I have four witnesses sitting there. I can't fly off the handle and misunderstand something. Able to leap tall. Assumptions in a single bound. <laughs> Yet there's one thing. He hasn't judged me according to his law. He's judged me according to his mercy. He chose me first. He chose every one of us that are sitting here that love him first. He extended his love to us before we ever even knew how to extend our love to him. And even sometimes now, I think I have a hard time, really, when I say, Lord, I love you. I feel like sometimes I really need to say, no, really. No, honest. No, really, Dad. Really, I love you. Let me be honest with myself. I need Him. I don't just want Him. I don't just want to have a relationship with Jesus Christ because I fear that I'm going to spend eternity in hell. That's a great benefit. I want to have a relationship with Him now because I want to be able to know Him fully by the time I get there to see Him. I don't want to have to look at somebody else and say, Is that Him? Is that Him? Is that Him? David is being honest. And in verse 3 and 4, he says, For the enemy has persecuted my soul. He has crushed my life to the ground. He has made me dwell in darkness like those who have long been dead. Therefore, my spirit is overwhelmed within me. My heart within me is distressed. First, he brings his complaint, and then he says, this is what I need. I want you to judge me according to your mercy. And then he cries out to him, and he says, now, on top of that, not only all these things are going on, but my spirit is so weak within me, I fear that if you don't intervene, I am going to die. I need you. These are all the things that are going on. I'm being pursued by my enemy. Everything that's happening to me is going against me. Nothing is going for me. There is nothing here that is good for me right now. I'm not only thirsty and I'm not only a dry land, but if something doesn't happen quick, I am dead. He's being faced with his own mortality and his trouble and his problems and his trial and everything that's going on. And if that isn't enough to wake you up and realize that you need an almighty God, then I don't know what will. When I realize this one thing, I don't know, hope nobody here is afraid to go to sleep at night. I used to be. On top of that, being afraid of the dark. I no longer am afraid to close my eyes. Before I was saved, I was. Because I had to keep track of everything. What David says here, God, Almighty God, the one that is watching over me, he's crying out to him, and he's showing him the weakness that he has, and he says, you know what? Even, even if I close my eyes to go to sleep. I know God's covering me. I don't have to be afraid of anything. Whether I wake up tomorrow morning or 
not, that's for God. Whether I make it through the day or not, that's for God to make that decision. All I'm going to do is keep stepping. I'm going to keep moving. I'm not going to let this life paralyze me. We live in perilous times. How many people knew that Congress was really going to pass that bill? Huh? Let me share something funny with you. I sent my wife a text the other day. You know what? It's not looking real good for this Congress thing. The economy's going to collapse. It's like I'm some kind of brilliant economic mark. I've got the solution. We need to pull everything out of the 401k, except for a little bit, to make sure that we have it in case it crashes. I'd rather have a little than none. What if they take all that money? My wife, I won't tell you what her response was, but it was basically, you're stupid. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought, I have the plan. I have the plan. Yes, I'm going to save my savings. My wife, I'm so lucky. But I thought I had the answer. David here knows he doesn't have the answer. He doesn't have the answer. He says, look, I'm crushed. All this stuff is coming down on me. How many people have been going through um, trials, testings, by, by no reason you're because you caused it? It's just you've been chosen for this time. Okay? All right? How long? How long have you been going through that trial? How long? Ten years? Praise God. You see the light at the end of the tunnel right now, don't you? Keep going, sister. Don't stop. Don't stop. Not only do you have all of us here that love you and care for you, the Lord is on your side. Amen? Amen. Persevere. That's what we see David doing here. Okay? Keep going. Five years. Five years or less. Come on, five, five, we'll get a five, we'll get a five, we'll get a five. We'll get a five. <laughs> Going through a trial for five years. Six. Just myself. But you know what? I started seeing blessings coming out of it. My son, miss him terribly, lives in Houston, doing very well for himself. Married, has a wife, getting ready to move into his own place. He's not coming back here. Praise God. Praise God. But you see, that's what we raised him for. We brought him home. The day I brought him home was the first time I ever did 55 miles an hour on the freeway in a car or on a motorcycle. And cursed everybody that went around me going faster. Did you not know that I have my son in this car? <laughs> but seeing him and raising him to go on and be, go on and go off and do, do your own thing. Be your own man. I got to go and be my own man. It's about time. <laughs> yes, so. But I don't have to worry about him because I know that God's watching over him. Amen. Whether he's walking strong with God or not, I know God is in his life. Right. See, when he's old, he won't depart from him. We trained him up the way that he should go. It's up to him to follow that way. But David knew, even when he felt like he was going to be crushed by all these things that were going around. Matter of fact, when he said, I am crushed, the problem's a lot. <coughs> Trials at work. See that sign? You're now entering the mission field. How many people here have an opportunity to work outside the home? You don't work at home. You have a job. That is, I don't know, I've done more ministry in my job over the past four or five years than I have anywhere. And some things have changed, and some people have moved on. God's answer to prayer. Lord, either save them or move them. I don't have a problem praying that prayer. Either get them on board or put them on somebody else's bus. <laughs> Right? And if God chooses to keep them, even though they don't get on board, it must be because they're here for a reason. Well, I'm not talking to them. You talk to them. 
I can't stand the guy. You talk to him. If I pray for him, it's going to be a different kind of prayer. There's going to be a hook in the jaw involved somewhere there. Or a fiery arrow from somewhere hits him in the shoulder blade. But you see, all along, through all those times, in that mission field, God has been changing my heart. So yeah, I've been crushed in spirit. Just when I things were going, thought things were going well, things got worse. And just when I thought, hey, this is an opportunity, it became a curse. So I'm trying to figure out, Lord, what are you trying to do to me? My enemy has victory over me. You said that you wouldn't allow that to happen. This is what David is doing here. How do you take care of and what should you do when you're in that spot where you feel like you're crushed? Verse 5 says, I remember the days of old. I meditate on all your works. I muse on the work of your hands. I muse on the work of your hands. You know what word we get from that? Anybody? Amusement. You know what? There's another word that you can derive out of that word, muse. And you know what it is? Vegetate. You know, like when you watch TV? No TV watchers? Only two. Because we're all liars. <laughs> Come on. You know what? Here, how about this? You're having a hard day. How many people here use TV to escape from some kind of form of reality? It's just noise. You want noise in your in your head, in your background. I, want, I like the TV being played while I'm sleeping because I don't hear all the other weird noises that I hear in the house that I think there are demons coming out of the closets. <laughs> That's and, and, and there's a scientific term for that. That's called white noise. Okay. All right. You hush your mouth. <laughs> why do I always have to bring race into this thing? I'll tease it again. <laughs> Never mind, that, it's an old joke. But anyway, it's, it's white noise. It blocks out the other stuff instead of what you don't want to hear. So instead of hearing... Okay, how many people here freak out when you hear weird noises in your house? I hear how many people here take a firearm and go and investigate? <laughs> I do. I sure as heck do. Because if I ever come around the corner and there's some demon standing there, I'm shooting him. I don't know if it's going to work, but he's going to get shot at. I just hope it's not like my dog or something. You hear a noise, 2 o'clock in the morning. Not here. I promised I wasn't going to crack you. But here, picture this. I'm in a pair of shorts. Okay? I have no shirt on. Don't get weird. No shoes. Okay, here. I'm half awake. I'm going down steps. I have a gun. Now, if you were robbing my house and I came around the corner and you saw that, would you go... Or would you go ahead and forget it, man? Thanks for the laugh and leave. Serious. I know. I know. I can't help myself sometimes. But let's get back to this. David says, I muse on the work of your hands. When you're going through trouble, you're going through trials, don't choose things that are just going to distract you. If God has you going through a problem and it's not because He's chastening you, but He's trying to mold in you character that is fitting for service in the kingdom, don't distract yourself with other garbage. Distract yourself, if you must, with God's Word. You know what I always like to meditate on? The wonderful work that God did for His children, Israel, when He brought them out of Egypt.